Hi everyone, my name's James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. From the Studio Rats. Hi. And mate, it is good to have you back. It's nice to be back, it's a sunny day. Dave welcomes you. Thank you, Dave. So what we thought we'd do today is to basically prepare the Artist Mark II head against a couple of other amps. And we're gonna use it in a recording situation. So we're gonna be recording two tracks. One's a rock track and one's a more sort of... It's a ballad. Uh, it's an Americanary type ballad thing. It's so a ballad. It's a, ba it's a ballad called <laughs> James. So obviously we're using the Boss Katana Mark II Artist head. We're comparing it against this heavy thing. I'm so glad you lifted that. Oh my God, it weighs a ton. This is a Matchless Independence 35. And also we're comparing it against James's JCM 900. What we're doing, we've mic'd up this Marshall cab. This is James's Marshall 4x12 vintage cab. We mic'd that up with an SM57. The microphone is going to stay in exactly the same position through every single recording. Yep. And then we're just going to change around the heads. So I'm going to get a sound that I particularly like that sounds nice in the room to me. We're not going to use any effects from, so there's no reverb coming from any of the amps. The katanas, all the effects are switched off. There's no reverb on the matches and the reverb on the Marshall is switched off. Do you want to explain how we're doing this? Okay, so um, what we could do is ask Mr. Drew here to record the same tracks in exactly the same way each time. But you is human being <sighs> and probably can't do that. So what we've done is we've recorded a naked, unaffected DI from the guitar straight into my Neve Pre via the DI and it sounds something like this. Not very inspiring, I think you'll agree. Now, what we've then done is routed from Pro Tools, from the desk, through an output into this, which is a reamp box. Basically what it's doing is it's taking a line level signal, then it's converting it back to instrument signal. So it's effectively exactly the same as if I was plugging that guitar straight into the amp. Yeah, it's doing all the impedance matching and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. to, to fool, if you like, the amps into thinking it's a guitar plugged in and not a line level signal from an interface. Absolutely. That way we get Paul Drew the same way absolutely nine times. Thank so that's God. three passes, if you like, of the distorted rhythm part, three passes of the distorted lead part, and three passes of the clean bad salad. So, first of all, what amp should we do first? Should we do, the, should we do the matches first? Let's do the matches first because quite frankly you have to lift it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to record the matches first. I'm going to get a tone in the room, a tone that I particularly like in the room. Then we're going to try the katana and then we're going to do the marshal. But you guys are going to hear this back as a continuous piece of music so we can swap and chop between each of the three amps. So here we go, here's example number one. So I don't know about you, but I think the Katana held up extremely well against the other two amps. I, I have my personal favourite, of course. Because it's but, your amp. Yeah, but also I think, you know, that's what marshals do. That kind of chuggy chuggy, yeah. that's what marshals do exceptionally well. Yeah. Um, the Katana, you know, you can buy that relatively inexpensively. But well, let's these talk, let's two talk. are kind of, you know, off the, off the scale, aren't they? Well, let's talk about prices. So the Katana, uh, this one retails, I think about 600 pounds. Yeah. The, the Marshall JCM 900, you can't buy this anymore, but um, a new sort of recreation is about 1500 pounds. About that, yeah. So nearly three times the price. Yeah. And, the and, then, we, <laughs> and then we have <laughs> and then the matches, which is about three and a half thousand pounds just for the head. So 
there is a massive difference in cost between these. And I've got to say, the Katana was the easiest to dial in. Yeah. <laughs> it was just plug it in, set it to, was it crunch? Yeah, yeah you set it to the yeah. crunch channel. Yeah. And that's it, you set it to the crunch channel, you turn up the gain. Uh, basically, the, the EQ was, was flat. The only variation that we used was the actual variation button, which sort of changes the amp flavor just slightly. Yeah. So let's do the lead part now. So again, we'll start with the matchless, then the katana, and then the marshall, and we'll swap in between that for the solo. So where the Marshall struck gold with the rhythm part, yep. it's, it's really close between the Katana and, and the Matchless for me. Yeah, there's a, <laughs> it's funny, when I was recording the lead part, there's that little high pitch chime almost, isn't there? Almost squeak of a note, so that comes out on every, on every recording, so apologies for that, but you can hear you know, the exact sort of recreation of each amp. Um, yeah, I thought the Katana did amazing. And that was just a case of going from crunch to lead, wasn't it? You didn't do anything clever. There was no real tweaking or anything. It's no. Just... Right, so I've changed the channel from, from crunch to lead, as James said, and I've turned the gain up slightly. Yeah. There is a, there's tons of gain in the Katana. There's way more gain in the Katana than there is in the Marshall or the Matchless. Yeah. So now, example number three, we're going to choose a sort of clean track, Americana sort of style track. Um, we'll use the Matchless first on an edge of breakup sort of sound. Then we'll see if the Katana can actually do that mm -hmm. because we're going to be using the clean channel on the Katana. Which is, you know, traditionally that's the difficult sound to get. I think so. I, I think that, that kind of valvey, gritty, clean on the verge of breakup yep. is the difficult tone. Super clean, super dirty, has been done before. It's relatively easy to achieve. It's that tubey, crunchy yeah. sound that's really hard to do. Yeah, I, I completely agree. That is why amp sims struggle for yeah. that sort of sound. Then, for me, the Marshall isn't going to work for this, but we'll see. It shouldn't. Should it shouldn't it? work because the clean, the, the clean channel on these JCM 900s aren't fantastic. Um, so we'll see how that sounds. Anyway, should we do it? Let's do it. Well, mm. to be fair, and to give the Marshall its due... It sounded right, didn't it? Sounded it really good. It did sound good. Um, I love the Matchless. Yeah. But, but the thing is, it's like nearly 10 times. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> there's three grand's worth of difference between, between the Matchless head and the Katana head. And there's no way that is £3,000 worth of audio difference. No, no way in a million years. So, that, that thing's only great. So I would not have a problem at all in using a Katana for professional recording. We've said that many times. Every time we think, you know, something's gonna beat the Katana. Yeah. 
you know, it never does. It never does. Yeah, it just, it is a fantastic sounding amp and especially, I mean, not even for the price. No. Yeah. It's a fantastic sounding amp. Take the price element away. Exactly. And it's a great sounding amp. Yeah. Add the price element and it, it falls into the category, and I hate this phrase, it's a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer, <laughs> it is a no-brainer. So, I really hope you guys got something out of that video. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from Studio Rats. I'm Paul. I'm James. And we'll see you next time.